Okay, we're going to continue looking at factorization in integral domains in this video, looking at something called a unique factorization domain. So the definition goes like this. We say an integral domain D is a unique factorization domain, which we often shorten to UFD, if every non-zero non-unit can be written as the product of irreducible elements within the um, integral domain, and if we have an element A in the integral domain that can be written as the product of irreducible elements two different ways, so the product P1 to PR, Q1 to QS, where like I said, PI and QJ are both lists of irreducible elements, then it turns out we know two things. First of all, R equals S. So in other words, there's some sort of uniqueness to the number of irreducible elements that something can be factored into. And then furthermore, we do not require that these be the same list, but we require that they be the same list up to multiplication by a unit. And so we can write that down um, carefully in the following way. There exists a permutation sigma in SR, and so that's in the permutation group SR, with PI equals Q sigma I times UI, where UI is a unit. So what this means is that this list P1 to PR and this list Q1 to QR, they may not be the same list, but every element in the P list is an associate of an element in the Q list and vice versa. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence there. Okay, great. And so let's just recall what we mean by an irreducible element because it's not exactly a prime element. We will see that in a bunch of cases, primeness and irreducibility are the same, but not in all cases. So we say that P is irreducible if when P can be factored into A times B, we either know that A or B is a unit. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. So the integer z is a unique factorization domain. Um, we know that because of the fundamental theorem of, of arithmetic. So by the, by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now let's go ahead and try to factor something two different ways in the integers and see what happens. So let's go ahead and maybe do 30. So notice we can factor 30 as 2 times 3 times 5. And those are all primes. They're all natural number primes. But we could also factor these as uh, 2 times negative 3 times negative 5. But notice this is the same because negative 3 equals negative 1 times 3. And negative 1 is a unit. And furthermore, negative 5 equals negative 1 times 5, and negative 1 is a unit. So the list 2, 3, 5 and the list 2, negative 3, negative 5 are not the same list, but they're the same up to being a unit. And further, we know that negative 3 is an irreducible element because the only way to factor negative 3 is, again, negative 1 times 3, where negative 1 is a unit. And that is what it takes to be an irreducible element. Okay, so that's an example. I'll present two more examples without proof. So k adjoin x, where k is a field. In other words, the polynomial ring with entries in a field. That's, uh, some, that's a UFD. And then the Gaussian integer. In other words, the subring of the complex numbers with integer coefficients, that is also um, a UFD. So we'll see proofs of these later, but they're going to rely on some bigger results. And it's almost not worth it to prove these two results kind of by hand because it's just as easy to prove the big general results. Okay, I'm going to erase the board and then we'll look at two non-examples. We just saw three examples of uh, UFDs, the integers, polynomials over a field, which we didn't really look at very carefully because that's going to uh, rely on a bigger result, and the Gaussian integers. Again, we didn't look at that carefully because that's also going to rely on a bigger result. So now let's go ahead and look at two non-examples. The first will be z adjoin i root 3. So we looked at this ring uh, earlier. So this looks like uh, numbers of the form a plus 
B times I root 3, where A and B are integers. The next thing I want to notice is you can take the number 4 and factor it two different ways. So we can factor 4 the normal way, 2 times 2, which is happening within the integers, but we can also factor it as 1 plus I root 3 times 1 minus I root 3. So notice if we were to FOIL that out, we would get 1 plus 3 or 4. Okay, so let's see what it would take to be a UFD and see what goes wrong. So to be a UFD, we would need 2 equals 1 plus i root 3 times u, where u is a unit. But then another thing to notice is that if u is a unit within this ring, then its inverse is the same as its inverse in the complex numbers because we can just consider u as being an element from the complex numbers. So here we write u as a plus uh, b times i root 3. And notice that is within z i adjoin root z adjoin i root 3, which is a subring of the complex numbers. But what that tells us is that u inverse equals a minus b i root 3 over a squared plus 3 b squared. So that's just using this rule that in the complex numbers, the inverse is equal to the conjugate divided by the modulus squared. And so that's what we have going on over here. In order for this to be inside of z adjoin i root 3, then we'll need a over a squared plus 3b squared to be an integer. Because notice that's the real part of this, and we need the real part of this to be an integer. Okay, so that gives us two cases. Either a is equal to 0 and b is not equal to 0. And so I'll let you guys check that that doesn't actually work, and so the only case that's left over is that b has to be equal to zero. So that means b equals zero, but what that tells us is that a over a squared is an integer. In other words, one over a is an integer, but that means that a equals plus or minus one. But now if a equals plus or minus one, and b equals zero, but that means u itself started off as being just plus or minus one, which tells us that plugging that into this equation um, is that two equals plus or minus one plus i root three, but that's clearly not the case. And so in other words, this kind of factorization is impossible, which means that this ring is not a UFD. Okay, I'll clean up the board and we'll look at one more example. So we just showed that z adjoin i root 3 was not a UFD, and now we're going to show that the integers adjoin just the square root of 5 is also not a UFD. So notice that this sits as a subring of the real number, so we don't have anything uh, imaginary in this case. And so the main trick here is we want to uh, find an integer that factors two ways that are not compatible uh, with this rule down here. And we can actually use the same integer we used before, in other words, 4. So 4 is equal to 2 times 2, and it's also equal to um, 1 plus the square root of 5 times negative 1 plus the square root of 5. So notice if we were to FOIL that out, we would get negative 1 plus 5, which is 4. Okay, fantastic, but now in order for this to be a UFD, we would need uh, 2 and 1 plus root 5 um, are associates. Remember, associates mean they differ by a unit. In other words, 2 equals 1 plus root 5 times u, where u in z adjoin root 5 is a unit. But now let's go ahead and see why that doesn't work. So that means we would be able to write 1 plus root 5 times a plus b root 5 and get 2. But let's see what we get when we FOIL this out. That's going to give us a plus 5b. Great. And then our root 5 a coefficient will be, let's see, so our coefficient of root 5 will be 1 plus a, like that. Okay, now using the fact that all of this lives inside of the vector space, 
adjoin root 5, and q adjoin root 5 as a vector space has a basis of 1 and a basis of root 5, that means we can take this 2 over here and write it as 2 plus 0 root 5, and then um, equate the coefficients of 1 in other words, the rational numbers and the coefficients of root 5 on either side of the equation. So that's going to give us a plus 5b equals 2 and 0 equals 1 plus a. Notice that gives us a equals negative 1. But now if we go ahead and plug a equals negative 1 into this, we'll get uh, negative 1 plus 5b equals 2, which tells us that 5b equals 3, which tells us that b equals 3 over 5. But now that means that this guy is not an element of z adjoined root 5. So it's not an element from that, which means there is no such factorization of the number 2 into 1 plus root 5 times a unit. So we have a non-unique factorization in this ring. Okay, that's a good place to stop.